Welcome to my channel, where I share my knowledge on programming the DJI Tello drones with Python. Today, we're going to get into part two of our search and rescue drone series by adding a face detection button to our GUI. What this button will allow is for us to press the button and perform face detection over our video feed. This is essential for a search and rescue drone to locate missing individuals under rubble, which might make them a little bit harder to see. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here we are on GitHub. You can go ahead and pull it from here, copy, zip file, whatever you want. It's here, try it out on your own. If you'd like to stick around, let's get into it. So we have a file titled button control face detection.py. This is the file that we're working on today. Now for this, we're gonna use a script from a previous video where we perform face detection over the webcam and the Telos video stream. And we did this using the HAR frontal face cascade model. Now you can find this here, but the method we're interested in is the detect faces. So we will be copying and pasting this into our code in a minute. But before that, we have a couple things to do. So let's go into PyCharm and let's look at the module. All right, so here we are in the PyCharm and I've got the project over here with everything titled as well. Again, GitHub, it's all there. Pull it, test it yourself if you want to. If not, let's go through things. This is the script from our previous video, Search and Rescue, Rescue Drone Part 1, but we're making some additions I've outlined. The first addition is in the initialization method right here for our drone controller class. So we're going to go down and right below what we did in our last video with the camera down button and the camera down parameter set to false, we've got to define a new parameter. We're going to title this self.face detection. We're going to set this to false. Now, similar to our camera down, this is so that we can determine whether or not face detection is needing to be performed over our video stream, which we'll specify in our video stream method. Now, we're going to do that last. Um, we're going to go through the steps one by one. So after specifying this attribute for basically setting whether we're detecting faces or not, true or false, we're going to go ahead and create a button. Just as we've done before, we're going to put it in the root put the text detect faces on it and we're going to tie it to a command using a lambda function and we're going to title that self.detect faces. If you can see right below that's step three. So before we do that let's go down to step two because we've got to go ahead and put this button on our GUI actually and we'll do this in the run application method. Now right here in the run application method we're going to just go down and here's step two I have to find add our new button to the GUI. Simply we have to grid it to the GUI and we're gonna go ahead and do so in a way that the button should be in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the specifics of the grid method. I think we've done that enough and the documentation is out there if you'd like to look. So that's step two. So we've got a parameter that can be true or false for if we're performing face detection. And then we've got a button to activate face detection and we put it on our GUI. Step three is defining that method. And the method is here. So step three, we have to define a method for to use that parameter, that Boolean parameter. And we define this so that we can activate or deactivate base detection. So the method we're gonna call self or uh, set detect face, we're gonna take self as the parameter because it's a class method. And we're gonna do a simple if check. We're gonna check if that self dot base detection parameter is true. If it's true, well, we wanna set it to false. And if it's not true, that means it's false and we want to set it to true. This is similar to what we've done before and it can be a little confusing at first, but this is for determining whether or not we're going to activate face detection in our video stream method. So this method is good and all, but it doesn't detect faces. That is that method from the uh, face detection over webcam or tele video stream. So I went ahead and I copied this and I pasted it right into my script here. Now it's a static method because it doesn't have any dependencies on the class or change the math or change the, the anything to deal with it. So we define it as a static method up here. This basically means we could have it defined outside of the class as a function and it would operate the same. But since this is a uh, method that is directly used by our drone controller and no other classes, we're going to go ahead and include it in the class because I think it does play a direct part with the class and it's more well understood within it. So this method we went over in the previous video, please check it out because I don't want to go through the specifics. Take in the frame, we get our cascade from our XML file, 
radar frame to pass it in. And then we perform tape face detections, draw rectangles. And we also put the count on the screen, I should say right here. So go to the previous video if that wasn't enough, but let's move on. So that was step four. Now I think there's only two more steps. Step five would be to go to our video stream method where we use that parameter, uh, Boolean parameter, whether face detection is being performed. So let's go down here, pass the run application method to our video stream method. Step five. So if you remember from the blast video, we went ahead and had to do a, a little bit of adjustments in this method as well for our camera down button. And we did this after resizing the frame by checking if the camera down was on. So if the camera down was set to true, then we wanted to go ahead and crop out the frame, the part of our uh, returned frames that didn't contain that noise because the bottom camera is that infrared sensitive camera. So we're gonna do a similar thing for face detection. We're gonna check if the face detection parameter is true. And if that's true, then we wanna call our detect faces method on the current frame. Now, this is why we did this in such a way. It's a little confusing at first, but it works well with the class. The class has a way of knowing whether or not face detection, that method needs to be called. And it does so in the video stream method, which we wanna operate throughout our entire time running the script. And that, that's it. We don't have to do any more cleanup because there's nothing here that's affecting the drone. If we kill our program and face detection set to true, or uh, yeah, because it's initialized with false. So if it's set to true and we kill our program, well, it doesn't matter because we're gonna reinitialize this class and it'll reinitialize it with the parameter set to false. Whereas with the drone, it would keep that internal state of the camera down. And that's why we had to do the resource cleanup. So that's it. Quick review, we added a parameter Boolean parameter to determine our video stream, whether or not we want to call that face detection method. And then we defined a button to activate that. So what did it activate? Activated that set of faces, uh, which essentially took our Boolean parameter and set it to whatever value it was not currently set at. If the button's pressed, because the method's called. And then we went ahead and adjusted our uh, video stream after adding that method itself. So. That's all there really is to it. This is an essential part of a search and rescue drone because again, like say a tornado happened and you have to fly your drone into a collapsed house or building and there's people stuck in there or possibly, well, it would be really helpful to be able to perform face detection while flying through the rubble so that missing individuals could be seen by the drone in a way that we necessarily maybe wouldn't be able to. So this is a real world application. It's on a basic level because we're using the frontal face cascade, which it's not the best because it requires those frontal face features, but it's not resource intensive. It's a quick one. So it's a good way to test our program and implement it in a real world application scenario. So we're at the point where we're going to go ahead and test this. I'm going to fly the drone up to detect my face and then I'll switch the bottom camera and we'll put Tesla on the ground and see if we can detect Tesla's face. So let's get to it. Alright, I've connected to the drone. Let's go ahead and test this out. So we'll go ahead, sit down, and we'll hit run. We'll pull up our terminal and we'll see. We sent our command stream on. All good. We'll have the GUI popping up. Now we're gonna go ahead and first take off. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring it up. And then we'll go ahead and turn on face detection. Yep, and we're detecting my face. So now, let's go ahead and switch to our bottom camera. And let's move over to that block. Hey, there we are. All right, so this is dependent on the lighting, but we're picking it up, so we're good. Let's go ahead, switch our camera direction back. Go ahead. Oh, it's not crash. Ah, wrong key. You gotta be careful with the key you're pressing. All right, let's go ahead. 
and let's go ahead and land in my hand here. We did that. And that's it. We performed face detection with a button press on our search and rescue drone GUI. So you saw we were able to detect my face, we detected Tesla's face here, and a key point here is that it's heavily dependent on good lighting in your environment. Because not only are we using a infrared, infrared uh, sensitive camera emitter sensor, whatever you want to call it, uh, but also the hard frontal face cascade relies on these frontal face features, so we really need them to be clearly visible, such as the eyes, nose, and mouth. So we did it regardless, and it works. Now, this could be useful for search and rescue scenarios where you're needing to look for a missing individual, and they may be hidden under debris, so having their face detected by our drone would be awesome because we might not be able to see them under the debris. Next, we're going to look at adding color detection so that we can have the capability to find the missing individual based on the color of their clothing they were wearing when they went missing. So if you like this, please like, comment, share, subscribe. All the work. I appreciate your support. Until next time, have a great day.